Welcome to the Rhino Creativity course. This is the third video out of four videos and this video is on all things surfaces, everything that you can do and model and think through surfaces. One of the best parts of Rhino is its ability to manipulate surfaces and work with surfaces and you can get a bunch of SketchUp plugins to get close to it but it's just not quite the same and this is one of the reasons why I just absolutely love working in Rhino is all the capability with surfaces. So I thought it would be fitting to have a video completely dedicated to all things surfaces. So let's get into it. Okay, so as you know, to create a surface, there are a couple avenues that you can go about doing this. Uh, one is creating 2D ge geometry in any of the views here and clicking that geometry and typing in planar surface. If we go to shaded view, we uh, that generates a surface. The other way is just going straight to the surface tool and you select a series of points and you create a surface. Uh, it's good to note that if you want to hit this use the planar surface, you can't do that with open geometry. So if I had something like this and I hit planar surface, it wouldn't be able to close that. And good thing is, is that it says it right there why it can't do it. And I can always come in here and hit close curve and that would close it and then I could hit planar surface. You'll notice that I can't use planar surface if it's not a planar if it's not planar, which means if it's if the curve's not on one plane, uh, you're not going to be able to use this planar surface. So how would you create a surface if you have a curve that's not on one plane? There's also again a couple ways to go about this. The first one is to actually use the patch tool. And the patch tool we went over previously but just want to review uh, creates a surface and it doesn't have to be closed but it's definitely helpful if you have a closed curve because then you can uh, automatically trim it and you don't have a crazy surface and here you uh, select how many spans you want and what's nice is you can do a preview of that and you could increase the spans in any direction okay uh, again uh, so that's the patch and then the other way that you could well there's there's actually just hundreds of ways but the other way let's say you had two curves and you wanted to create a surface you can select those two curves and you can hit loft okay so we have the patch, we have the loft, we have the planar surface, and then we have the selecting the surface to begin with. And then another thing with the loft command is it doesn't have to be straight curves. You could do a series of curve tools, curve tools, curves, uh, select all these and hit uh, loft and get a curve that way. You'll notice that loft does not work if you have a closed curve so just keep that in mind it's really working off of a series of curves that then you create a surface to do that so once you have a surface how would you manipulate that how would you adjust it and mess with it uh, I do have a number of tutorials on topography that I definitely recommend that you check out I'll go over this aspect a little uh, qu quicker but if you want to go more in depth on topography check those videos out uh, but yeah let's say we were to want to create some uh, basic topography here I have a, a surface here and what you can do is you can actually type rebuild and that's going to rebuild your surface and that creates the opportunity to adjust the U and V values so how many segments are available to you and uh, you can also preview those so if you want high fidelity then you would increase the amount of uh, u and v points that you want okay so we can press okay 
So the advantage of that is I can now use two commands that are pretty helpful. One is solid point on, and that just illuminates the points of the four corners that you can move these uh, by. And if, whenever you want to not see those points anymore, you just press escape. And you can do control shift and select the points and move them that way. If you just type in point, oh, type in points on, there we go. Then every single one of those grid points you have here, you can start manipulating the surface that way. So this is a very good way to manipulate the surface, push, pull, and you can manipulate the topography or surface in that way. Uh, manipulate or create surfaces is using these uh, various sweep and follow me type of commands where you're using two uh, curves and then creating a surface through that. So let's take a look at how some of those functions work. So if you go to the surface tools and I recommend going to all these panels, checking them out and seeing the various things that they do, but it will just give you a an overview of kind of everything that's available. Uh, so you can kind of just check out, you have a sweep one, you have a sweep two, you have a, a revolve, and you kind of just get an overview of this various uh, curve sweeping commands that you have available. So let's just start with a sweep one, standard. And we'll go sweep no, I want to do sweep one and select the rail. Let's do that again. Select the rail. There we go. I guess they're both considered the rail uh, and you can change the options road free form. And again, now you have uh, this. And again, it's similar, you know, you can control shift and you can uh, manipulate the the curves itself so i can uh, scale this and manipulate it i can push it up i can control shift oh again sorry i'm pressing control shift i can extrude something uh, to get a cap i can extrude something to get a base and uh, pretty quickly here create just some kind of uh, preliminary uh, things that might be things that you want to explore and Again, uh, you can go points on and uh, manipulate uh, the form that way. Okay, then let's take a look at sweep two, uh, which also, especially if you're making a tower, I'll just review this one again. I know I went over this before, but it's, it's always good to, to review. Um, again, you can just kind of make this all in the various views. And then let's do a sweep two, sweep two. I can uh, select first rail, second rail, and I can determine the fidelity. And press OK. So you see how I created more segments. I can select this and do a points on and uh, just manipulate this geometry however like. At any point you can hit rebuild and create more points to manipulate. There you go, pretty, pretty cool. All things surfaces. I should mention, uh, we ha I'm not going to get into it in these tutorials because I don't really enjoy the sub D tools too much yet, but this is another way that you can create geometry and uh, edit solids and surfaces as well. Okay, then we'll do one more curve tool here. Uh, let's do the revolve one so I can come into the front view. Whoops, let's just do some random curve. I can do the revolve um, and I'm gonna hit revolve, select the axis, Sub D thing. So if you wanted to get into sub D's and you want to select 
uh, one of these segments. Uh, you could use the sub D to do that. Uh, but let's just do the points on and you can again, you don't have to select one point, you can select a series of points, and then uh, push and pull that geometry like so. Pretty cool. And um, yeah, you can also sometimes it's easier just to kind of like select all of them and then deselect them and then move it like that too. So lots of options uh, with that. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to go over in terms of surfaces is the record history function. Again, a little bit of a review, but uh, I think it's important just to go over again so we really uh, learn how to do some of these things. So this can be really helpful for topography. So, you know, let's just mock up some topography real quick. All right, so that's our topography and we can just select this and hit loft, create our topography that way. We can select all the topography and hit patch like we went over and create it that way. But again, look how it doesn't uh, trim it. If we did want to trim it, we could go to the four corners or of the kind of the boundaries of what we're trying to uh, trim here. And then um, like I could even just like punch this out, punch this out. It doesn't have to be exact. Uh, and now I hit patch, then it, it trims it, which is, which is nice. But again, like if I want to, let's say I want to manipulate this, I would do my points on and you know, I'm kind of, relying on kind of this inaccurate kind of bumping up and down of points. Uh, but maybe I want to adjust the topography lines itself as a way to uh, change the geometry. So the way that I could do this is if I have these lines, I could hit loft, sorry, select the lines. Then I hit this record history and it has to be highlighted. Now I hit loft do a normal loft. Now what's awesome about this is I can select my line work and I can change it and changing that will change the surface. So it's inherently linked to the surface itself. And if it's doing something weird, uh, you can always just go and adjust it. So again, just a lot of ways to do one thing, uh, but using that record history you can come into, you can take advantage of it. It's, it's really cool. All right, so that's it. That's all I got for you today. Everything and all things surfaces. Let me know if you have any questions. Again, this is Nate Studio Desk, and thank you for joining me. Leave some comments below and subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you soon. Have a good day.